Hey there, my name is Corey and I paint creepy little dolls. Today I'm going to be working on a kit-bashed version of the Sisters of Battle Morven Vale. This will be used for a Chaos Battle Sisters army, the Bad Habits. We're going to start by priming the model in a glossy black primer, so we're going to be using some color shift paints. We're also going to prime her flayed flesh robe white. Just make it a little bit easier to base coat. Now, once the primer has had time to set, we're going to take a color shift paint here. This one is a purplish green. And we're going to slowly start to build up our highlights. We don't need to airbrush every last inch of the model. Mostly, I'll be coming in from a 45 degree angle and doing this over a couple of coats. All right, next we're gonna be setting where we're going to be doing our highlights going forward. So I'm getting a paint, I'm using War Colors 5, I believe here. Um, it doesn't have to be that paint, we just want something that isn't opaque. Uh, generally darker colors are better uh, for building up uh, highlights without completely overriding what was underneath it. We're gonna be doing this over a couple of coats the high points, corners of things, places of obvious reflection. Next I'm adding in a little bit of fluorescent pink paint into my mixture there and I'm going to be focusing on uh, refining those highlights even more. At this point, I'm working completely with the fluorescent paint, and if you notice, I'm kind of only coming from one zenithal direction. Wherever we have a high edge on our model, we want one side to be light, and we want the other side to be dark. This simulates the way light will flow in real life on an object, and it'll help to sell the legitimacy of the highlight. All right, and finally, I'm adding a little bit of white to my existing fluorescent mixture, and I'm just hitting those really bright spots on the model. I wasn't completely happy with the current contrast on the model, so I got some dark blue paint. I think this is a War Colors Navy 4 or something like that. And I'm just hitting the uh, shadows of the model and also on the high points, wherever we have a very bright section near an edge, on the other side of that edge, I'm hitting it with that blue as well to provide that contrast. Alright, and with that, the airbrushing's complete. Alright, so switching over to the painting table here, I got some Barbarian Flesh and some Kislev Flesh on my wet palette. And I'm going to start adding that Barbarian Flesh onto the uh, folds of skin that Val's wearing as a dress here. And another coat. And another coat.
and another I'm not really feeling this paint um, while we're here we're just gonna throw some bronze from Vallejo model color which is a truly awesome line of paints now using mostly kids love flesh I'm working on highlighting the skin I'm using a color called Dead Flesh by Game Color to do the base coat on all the skulls on the model, including the base. Using a little bit of liquid talent here, so I'm mixing a 50-50 blend of eggs Eggs Rax Earth Shade, Egg Rax Earth Shade, and Reikland Flesh Shade. Boom, nailed it, one take. It's not the end of the world if it pools or tea stains a little bit here, but we try to clean it up the best we can. All right, so now for my favorite part, playing with oils. We're gonna want something for verdigris or verdigris. Uh, your basic red, blue, magenta, yellow, um, and a black and white. I've decided to use some enamels as well, so I'm going to use a black panel liner, some generic thinner, um, something for rust deposits, aka Interactive is awesome, and a Kursk Earth enamel wash I've never used before. We're gonna start by applying our Minty Fresh toothpaste all over the bronze parts of the model. And you don't really need to be detailed with this, just slop it on. I went back and painted a couple items steel, so I'm going to be using the rust deposits directly on those. Now for the probably most interesting part of this process is we're going to take our magentas, our reds, and our blues and we're going to paint them in places where there are cuts on the flesh of the model, places where it's pushed up against metal and might be bruised, and get a number of different colors in there. Uh, kind of the more the better. Flesh is a kind of complex surface, and uh, sticking with only a couple colors sometimes doesn't really read as genuine. I'm mixing some white, some magenta, a little bit of red, and some yellow to create kind of a warmer flesh tone here to paint in some of the areas of the flesh uh, to provide a little bit of variation and to kind of smooth into some of the bruised colors that I've already put in place. Adding in a little bit of blue allows me to paint in our shadows. All right, this is why I like oil so much, because you get to see it all come together. I'm gonna grab some cheap, makeup sponges from the dollar store and start cleaning up our oil and enamel deposits. Look at that. All right, so I'm gonna grab a big dollop here of spicy mustard and throw it all over the base, uh, including the rocks. Why not? Now 
Now the advantage of using an enamel wash here is I poured out a bit of uh, oil paints, uh, just some browns and some with a bit of green and a little bit of yellow, and I'm adding to that to the rocks to give a little bit of variation. I'm also taking a bit of that black panel liner and mixing that right into the center of the model, and this will provide a shadow to give a little bit of scale to veil. So this took a couple days to dry, um, and I've come back to the model here, and I'm dry brushing it with a bit of Zandri dust, um, just staying near the outsides of the model because we don't want to overwrite that shadow we made in the center. Oddly enough, in this dry brush, I had a little bit of red paint still in it somehow, and it looks kind of neat. I like the effect that came out of it, but hell if I know how I'm going to reproduce it. I don't actually remember what red paint was in the brush. I do a couple more passes of dry brushing, adding a little bit more white paint. In this case, I'm using ivory to my mixture, slowly building up the whiteness of that base further and further to the outside. Finally, we dry brush a little bit of true copper onto the bronze elements, and we're done. All right, so I mix a little bit of ivory into that dead flesh color. And although I could say I'm using a stippling motion here, that would be a lie. Um, I'm in denial about having my blood sugar off and I need to eat a cookie and have a nap. Yeah, look at those shakes. Shake it. At this point, I still have not had a cookie, but I am using almost pure ivory and I am hitting the edges of the cracks and the really high points of the skull. All right, with a cookie consumed, we're gonna start getting nasty and we're gonna make some blood effects. Mom, if you're watching this, you don't have to keep watching. This is gonna get really gross. So we're gonna take some Gorilla Glue fabric tack, which is awesome, and just regular old super glue. Using some torn up cotton swabs, I'm gonna mush a bunch of blood for the blood god into them. And that's gonna make kind of torn up guts and viscera. Alright, so we're also going to take some blood for the blood god, a little bit of dark ink here, and some gorilla glue, and we're going to start pulling that out with a toothpick. Now, I actually didn't really like how it worked out with the darker ink in it in this case, but the idea is, is we're basically trying to make it look like pulled out uh, veins and tough muscle. Uh, this is what it looks like with just blood for the blood god and no dark ink. All right, let's make some messy blood smears. This Fabri-Tac is really cool. It dries crystal clear and quite stringy and goopy. So when you pour it into some blood for the blood god here and you mush it up with a popsicle stick, when you lift it up, it kind of looks like if a thwomp actually landed on Super Mario and started raising back up what it would look like. And that's kind of what we're going for here. It's not long enough, you can grab a toothpick, you can kind of just tickle it, just tickle it a little, and kind of like pull it down and poke it and play with your little tiny piece of flesh there until it's a little bit more pulled out. There. Perfect. You're beautiful. All right, now that we have all of our gut stuff, we're going to start pushing it up into the gut stuff holes where the gut stuff goes. Um, you can get a little messy with the super glue fitting stuff in there because we're going to be painting over that with more uh, messy blood, so it's not really gonna stick out. Uh, one thing I did notice is for some things that are a bit longer, it's a lot easier to glue one end on, wait for it to dry completely, 
and then just glue the other side into position. So I'm going to grab some matte medium here, or any thick acrylic medium will do, and we're going to need that in just a little bit. But for now, we're going to get more Blood for the Blood God, and we're going to start painting it kind of coming out of the eyes of the skulls on the model. Uh, kind of reminiscent of the uh, Age of Sigmar corn spell that does the same thing. Uh, to add some contrast, we're going to mix in some brown and black ink into that blood and start painting that into the deeper recesses. If it gets in the wrong place, smudge it with your finger. It'll actually probably look better because it's blood and blood gets everywhere. All right, finally, we're going to take that darker blood mixture and we're going to mix it in with that acrylic medium. We're going to start sticking it kind of into places where all those little pieces of blood connected to our model. And not only will this kind of make it a little bit more complex, but it also cover up the spots where we were super gluing those chunks in place, which doesn't look completely natural. An adorable little bloody snail trail and uh, our blood effects are finally done. Just kidding, I'm a big liar. So I'm gonna take the airbrush and I'm gonna dab a big makeup brush into some blood effects. And I'm gonna just start squirting the back of the brush so that it sprays all over the model. Because if you disembowel someone with a large scythe, it's gonna go all over the place. Like it's just part of that job. So we need to make sure our model reflects that reality. A couple of manual little splorches of blood painted onto the scythe, and uh, I think we're done. Alright everybody, thanks for watching me paint a doll. This was a lot of fun. I've never actually edited or filmed or anything before, so... It's definitely a learning experience. If you wouldn't mind doing all, um, you know, algorithm engagement rituals in a timely manner, that would be very much appreciated, etc. Um, how do you end a video? <laughs>